to today wear a different hat. Yep. I'm going to be Hannah's uh, instructor. I'm going to take Hannah through uh, a quick workout using a piece of kit known as a, a ball worker. There are many good different types of machines and mechanisms like this. This is known as an X5 and uh, I'm going to be taking Hannah through. I believe this is your first go with this, yeah. isn't it? Marvellous. Well, let's just, if we may, we'll start. We've already activated, so let's start. We may handle with the first one. I'm going to ask you to hold it like so and just squeeze in gently. And just to prepare for the work, if you want to face the camera, I just want you literally to pull it in, but only about 30 to 50 percent of your effort breathing. You start feeling the heart getting a little. It starts yeah. working, it's surprising how much hard work it is. The next one everyone likes, I'd like you to hold it like Robin Hood, high elbow and bringing it back. And yes, and see how you go, you may want to use, that's it, or even use one strap on one side and two on the other. And this means we can adjust the range of movement. So do a little gentle one at 30 to 40 percent, have a good solid grip as if you were holding a gi. You mustn't get too Robin Hood there, that's it. And you'll see that Hannah now is breathing, working. We've done about five seconds, we're going to do about another seven. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, and relax. So having previously activated, we're going straight into the exercise. We're working here at a range where Hannah's putting in between 60 to 70 percent, so we're, we're not working at the top end, but we are working at so that we're building localised muscular endurance and getting a good workout. Having done that, we have to do the other side, I'm afraid, so Hannah's going to switch around, and again, she's breathing, good stance, high elbow, it's working in two directions, there's an arm walking and an arm pulling, and this pulls the back. And we've got about five seconds to go. Four, three, one thousand, two, one thousand, one, one thousand, and relax. Now, again, on the counting, we both know every hand as people who work with uh, athletes, you can have a stopwatch, you can have a timer, you can be as accurate as you want. Can I ask you to describe how does that feel? Do you, can you feel body temperature going up? Yes, you can. Um, so, you can certainly, again, feel the muscles working. I start to feel it again here, so I'm naturally to pull myself up to help. Um, and yeah, the heart rate goes up and then you start breathing harder. Isn't it marvellous, because from a, a general life, quality of life exercise regime, it covers many things. So let's now look at a, a little different exercise. I'm going to ask you to do the sort of chest expander. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I think you'll find if you hold lower down as you haven't used the ball worker before, you get a better, smoother range of movement. Mm -hmm. Out there in the middle, yes. Okay. And again, Hannah's already activated, high elbows pulling. Four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand, and relax. And again, you can feel it really, it really does get, get things going. The next one I call the strong man because it, um, it gets some interesting facial expressions on this, so perhaps not the one to do with strangers visiting. But you're literally getting your ball worker and you're bringing it here and you're pushing it in. Now, of course, how far you depress it will depend on your size and body weight. It's the effort you're putting in. So it is important, isn't it, that the people who are following our videos make sure that they yes. relate it to themselves. Yes. You know, there are many chaps much stronger than either Hannah or myself who will come in and can bend these. But don't compete with other people. Compete with yourself. Over to you. So the strong man, no doubt, your facial expressions will be as interesting as mine. So it's really holding here and pushing yeah. in. So that position. That's it. Pushing. Again, it's hard work. Yes, I'll let you breathe. No one manages to have too cheerful a face. That's about six, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand, and relax. Now the bottom hand position varies. This you did there is a good one for pulling people in in jiu jitsu. If you do it with the hands so the thumb was there, Dr. Hannah demonstrated that one, which is a good pulling in exercise, and again we do both sides, but equally you can do it with the hand with the thumb up, so you're pushing in from the back arm, and this will present a new range of challenges, so again we'll look at the facial expressions, <laughs> Dr. does this so well normally, 
So you're coming up and you're, it's almost like that, but you're pushing across your body more. Across your body more like that. Yes, so the back arm is now compressing in. Compressing in, okay. Breathing. Three, one thousand, four, one thousand, five, one thousand, six, one thousand, seven, one thousand, eight, one thousand, nine, one thousand, ten, one thousand, and break. And again, can you feel that? It really does get bits, yes? Yes, it does. So the beauty of this is, you see, that you can do both sides, and it really is applicable to a lot that we do when we're doing particular sports. And we'll be producing different workouts, different things. This is just a, a very quick five minute look at some of the exercises. Now an unusual one where you can use the floor to assist, where you bring your arms on the inside, because in our chosen sport of jiu-jitsu, often people will crush your arms. And so this opening up position becomes really useful. We'll get Dr. Hannah to do this for us. And again, if you haven't got a partner, you just go on the floor, be careful it doesn't slip, so you need to come out in an even action. I'll just hold that for you there. And just apply it a little further down, it's more comfortable then. Yeah. And off we go. So bring your elbows in front, that's it, and it's opening up. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand, four one thousand, five one thousand, six one thousand, seven one thousand, eight one thousand, nine one thousand, 10, 1,000 and relax. And again, you can really feel that, can't you? Yeah, yeah. If you have a compression garment to save, you know, sometimes people find their elbows grip on the strap, that can be used. Now having done those obvious ones, what I want us to do now is a very, very simple one where we're going to kneel down. We're going to hold the strap here and we're going to pull up now it's important to have spine in line and your scaps on so you don't injure your back. And I find as well, just like when you're teaching tackling or going in for a single or double leg, tongue to the roof of the mouth is really good setting the jaw and keeping the neck in line. Let the good doctor have the joy of this. And these are hard exercises, so don't go try them unless you've activated properly first. Okay. Off we go. Tongue the roof of the mouth. Pulling up. Pulling up. Right up as high as you go. And you may want to put one strap only on the bottom water and you'll get a bigger range of movement. But again, can you see with Hannah here how you use the straps determines where you're going? If you relax for a moment, if you now take the top straps individually and then you'll get a different range of movement. So you can almost do an upright rowing position. Yes. And give the doctor a chance to do 10, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000. 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000. Marvellous. Now, again, because we don't want to, uh, we don't want to tire our uh, uh, PT out too much, but you see you can do other things with this as well, from a leading position, spine in line and doing a curl. And again, breathing, spine in line and holding it. And because in jiu-jitsu specifically we need to control uh, our head onto the floor, I just open it like so, place it, hold, and squeeze. Now people always look horrified because they say, well, don't risk injuring your neck. Well, I'm not advocating you should do this if you're not used to it, but if you practice, and clearly with the different hairstyles that the doctor and I have, you have to wear appropriate headgear. Taking it off always scares people, but all you do is just come in, you just slide off. It sounds like I'm going to lose all my hair, but it's still there. Try this at home. Don't try this at home until you've actually warmed up. And what I mean by this is, you know, do work with someone who's experienced. But you see, another good one, which is good for the abdominal region, and of course the jaw, is to set your jaw, tongue to the roof of your mouth, and to compress down. And again, you'd hold this, not talking, for an appropriate time, at an appropriate effort. But you see, in Jiu-Jitsu, people push your head back and you're trying to bring down. And there's a lot of debate about this, but really if you're doing contact exercises, pre-contact, mm. and that's going to occur in the contact anyhow, the protective 
the protective effect, which is what all chronicles are doing, concentric exercise before you do eccentric exercise. If you're going to use the muscle in a way that you're going to use in the activity, in a graduated preparatory way, it's safeguarding against injury. And is that consistent with the ACNT? It is, it is, Helen, and it's something which I know you and I feel strong on, the idea of activating, joining the brain and the muscles up, getting the neuromuscular system to work, the proprioceptive system, getting the vestibular system switched on, are all things that Dr. and I work on in different theatres. Uh, Dr. Hannah here is a specialist in dealing with people over the age of 65, uh, and many of them are quite mature, aren't they, when they have problems in terms of loss of balance, power, loss of power, and a little bit of strength training can do a lot to help with that. And one of the interesting things is that the new demographic is of people who are really overweight and who have really low muscle mass, so we call it sarcopenia with obesity. Right. And actually what we really want to do in them is be able to burn fat, but build muscle. And so again, all of this is really useful because it, it's been demonstrated that things like hand grip strength is correlated with really poor outcomes. If, you're, if you have really low hand grip strength, you're much more likely, uh, if, even if you're in your 50s when that's discovered, to go on to have multi-morbidity and early death. And we've seen that very much in sort of more obese populations, which are now much more prevalent. So for me, that's really interesting, what you just said about, about being able to build up strength in an easy way like this. And well, this is good for travel as well, isn't it? I know you travel a bit with, awesome. the, with your husband Surridge and, and young Ari, or, New, new acquisitions of the family, Hannah's just had a lovely baby boy. But these things can, you know, yeah. ball workers can break down and go yeah. in a I can take that on the ward. Yes. Someone could do a bed exercise using their upper body with that. Um, in fact, I think we ought to do, as a, one of our forthcoming, upcoming videos, some seated exercise specifically for people in that position. And we'll get the doctor to use the ball work because this is the first time she's been introduced to it today. And um, we can make a, a make use of that, that'd be marvellous. Mm -hmm. Now, quickly for the jiu-jitsu, handing this back to the, the good doctor, we're going to get her to do the exercise, which I know is important in jiu-jitsu, where we're doing the guard, we're holding someone, but that means we need to better bring the legs in, because, so, the adductors bringing the legs together, we need to do that, and you have demonstrated in several videos the way in which you can use hands, but with the ball work, if I just borrow for one moment and then get, ask you if you'd be kind enough to demonstrate, we're holding here, squeezing in. And if you're a huge, strong beastie, then you can hold further up because obviously you'll be a bigger unit. For more uh, average sized folks such as ourselves, this will do. And again, look how it's working the grip. And as any judo or jiu jitsu person or wrestler will tell you, grip strength. Not only important in our sport, but as the doctor has said, in, as an indicator of uh, future outcomes in terms of losing muscle and quality of life. So, Dr. Squeezing, she's done about five seconds, again, we're not being particularly accurate. Four, three, one thousand, two, one thousand, one, one thousand, and relax. And can you feel that? It, it's, yeah. it, it's, a, it's a good exercise, isn't it? Now, if you hold like so on the inside of the straps and place it on the outside, we can now, having done the ab, we can do the ab, pushing it out, yes, and uh, so the hands, the hands, no, the hands go on here and there, and now you're going to open. And if you needed a wider range of movement, honey, you could just use one strap on one side and two on the other, or. So can you see, so the range of room, just so that Hannah's demonstrating for us here, she can just hold the one strap, and the back of the hand against the, the, the knee means you're not risking your hand, you're still gripping. And can you see you've got there a strong exercise with a different range of movement? Probably about five seconds left, five one thousand, four one thousand, three one thousand, two one thousand, and ended. Now whilst these are a complete you know, there are many more exercises we might want to do uh, for jiu-jitsu. It's just a sample of something which we've been talking, but you could do this in five minutes. And unlike some exercise, which has such a huge impact on body temperature that you can't sleep at night because brain temperature has an impact on sleeping, I find that isometrics can be done. Yeah. And providing you don't do it too late in the day, mm. You haven't had that massive rise in body temperature, although you do find your heart has increased. Mm. 
Yeah. What do you think? Do you think something you might fit in? Or? That's it. I mean, I think, I mean, depending on what baby's routine, but I tend to find that I have a bit of time in the evening, so I know he goes to sleep about half a day at night. So for me, that would be a perfect time to exercise. Now, I've tried to go to the gym at that time, but if I've done a 45 minute run, then I find that it's really difficult to, to wind down. So actually, that's ideal. Just something Cheers. simple at home, I don't have to go out and. Uh, and then I won't have that worry that it'll affect the little bit of sleep that no. I can get. So and this is something that's really important that I know another colleague of ours, uh, Dr. Colin Cannon, is, is very interested, in, especially interested in um, uh, sports medicine. And the thing is, you could just do a couple of those exercises, couldn't you? But you've yeah. still done something. You've done something, yeah. Uh, and this is the thing that we want to emphasise. Yeah. You've got to like and enjoy what you're doing, and you'll be having plenty more videos under the safe hands of uh, Dr. Hannah. But we thought we'd just quickly do a quick whiz through there. Something that even though it's not long, you've still toned muscles and prepared yourself to be better able to do general activities, or in our case, a spot of jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Thank you, that's really good. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> For the moment, from Dr. Hannah and Paul, goodbye.